excited about mixing your music in Atmos using cans, but things not gelling? Fear not, my immersive warriors, because today we're unlocking the secret weapon of Atmos mixing for headphones, binaural settings. Greetings! I am Pat, and now let's see what you need to be able to start experimenting with Atmos in headphones. First, we need to pick a workflow. Either a DAW with built-in renderer like Logic Pro, Pro Tools, Studio One, Cubase, there's many of them, or a DAW linked to the Dolby Atmos renderer through the Dolby Audio Bridge and the Dolby Atmos Binaural Settings plugin, which are part of the Dolby Atmos renderer software package, which you can purchase from Avid. Second, we need a good pair of cans. I personally use the Sony MDR MV1s that are special for spatial, but you can use literally any pair that you have available. They don't have to be special ones. Spatial ones? Special ones? Only caveat these need to be wired and nothing that does any onboard processing and or uses Bluetooth to connect, since that will give you a few issues with latency. Then we need to select the right options in our DAW and or monitoring software. In my workflow, I use Ginger Audio Sphere, which is a beast, by the way. So I can instantly switch between the speaker monitoring, the stereo master reference, binaural, etc. But all DAWs have built-in monitoring for the binaural, and so does the Dolby Atmos renderer software. Let's take a quick look how to set that up on Logic Pro and the Dolby Atmos renderer. We open our renderer and we open our DAW. I'm in Logic Pro here. When you go to settings, audio, Dolby Audio Bridge is here. Output device, input device, right? Renderer, and we have in our preferences, Dolby Audio Breeze as the, as, the, uh, as the input device, output um, device, again, the Dolby Audio Bridge. And here, if you scroll down, you'll see headphone only mode. Back to Logic Pro. This is a just a regular track, audio track that we load our binaural settings plugin. And this is the Dolby Atmos binaural settings plugin that comes with the renderer. You can download these for free from the uh, Dolby uh, website once you've purchased the, uh, the render. Now that we have everything we need, I know, I know you want to get to the meat and potatoes or the tofu and potatoes for my vegan friends, but please, please, let's understand first what we are doing here. Since for this we'll only be using headphones, this means that we'll be listening to the binaural version. But what does that really mean? Isn't it just two channels? Isn't it stereo then? Well, not really. I'll explain this and also throughout the video I will be giving you some words of caution. So, the main point of the binaural version of an Atmos mix what gets played when an Atmos file is listened to on a compatible device such as your phone through headphones is to utilize the metadata present in that audio file to basically try and fool your brain into believing the artist's intent when it comes to spatial information. In other words, where stuff are placed, like instruments, vocals, and effects, in that virtual 360 environment, that's virtual space. The binaural re-render, or simply the Atmos output for headphones, tries to approximate the experience of being in the room as represented by listening through a multi-speaker Atmos system, but through headphones. It simulates that 3D listening experience, that 3D space. But we need to understand that fake 3D space in order to make it work for us. And here's where the binaural render modes come to play. Basically, these modes control the perceived distance of a sound source relative to the listener's head in the virtual 3D space created for headphone listening. 
There are three modes, well, four if you count off, near, mid, and far. Let's take a closer look at these with some examples of how and when to use them. So here we have some avant-garde funk with uh, my Logic Session players here and uh, favorite uh, vocalist from the Peking Opera. Really cool stuff. So let's start listening to some of these things. I have a front, a side, and a rear. These go out to the objects that are in the front, in the side, in the rear. Okay, so let's just listen to these guys. Okay, so here are the binaural settings. This is a Dolby Atmos binaural settings plugin. And you can see here the left and the right, the two uh, speakers in the front, will actually have an off designation. Let's see if there's a difference between the off, the near, the mid, and the far. Okay. <laughs> So you see the difference? And this is in the front. So let's compare these with the side. See all the different options that you have, right? So this one now, the, uh, the front, is set to far, right? So let's set this to far and also set the side to far. So these are coming from the front speakers and these are coming from the surround speakers, okay? The mid surrounds, the ones that are in the middle of the room, right? So they're, they're all in far. And actually, let's do the surrounds too, the ones in the back. Those are all far. So all of these have the far binaural modes. Let's see, do they sound different? Here's the front. <laughs> side and these are the um, rear all of them set too far Let's compare them. Remember, they're all set to far now, right? hear how they all sound different? Can you pinpoint the differences? It's really interesting stuff. And this, of course, happens with everything. So if we set them all to near or all to mid, depending on what speaker they're coming out of, what object that is actually connected to a particular speaker, they would all change. So you have two things to think of, right? what speaker everything is coming out from, and also what is the binaural uh, modes. But the binaural modes, again, they're only for the headphones. Let's see the difference that this would make in a mix.
right? Let's start adding the uh, drop the funk lead guitar in the front, the side, and the rear. See what happens to the mix. Let's make these as they are, right? Let's go to near for the front. Let's go to mid for the mid ones and far for the back. But let's say we wanted to get the side one, for example. And we wanted that to sound a little closer to us. It sounds okay there, but we wanted it in headphones to sound a little closer. What would we do? Let's change this to near. So let's go to our vocalist now and uh, we'll listen to the objects, front, side and rear, and the corresponding, let's say, um, binaural setting of near, mid and far, right? So let's do front and near. front and side. Side and mid. Rare and far. So let's say now that we wanted it to come out the front, but we didn't want it to sound near. We wanted it to sound a little bit further back. or off. All this is nice and dandy, but how do you choose the right mode? Well, there is no right mode, really. Some choices might sound different than others, perhaps in a way that might not fit the song, but this is all open to experimentation. Remember, all this is only for the headphone experience and any choices made here affect only that. Meaning, if you put something at far in the binaural render mode, but in the mix the intent was for that element to sound close, well, you get my point. Moving on. So, how do you choose? Your choice depends on the creative intent and the type of sound source. Just experiment. Try the different modes, see what sounds the best in the context of the mix and for that particular song, and try to abide by some sort of hierarchy. Vocals and lead instruments will often benefit from being near, while ambiences and other background elements might sound better being far. Reality is your friend. Use these distance settings to mimic how sounds would naturally behave in a real-life environment. And mix it up. Avoid having too many of the same. For example, too many nears could make the mix sound claustrophobic and narrow, while too many fars will make it sound washed out and emotionally distant. Remember though, these are just guidelines. 
The beauty of binaural rendering is the flexibility to create a unique and immersive listening experience for your music when listened through headphones. Don't be afraid, be brave. Try stuff out. And now, another word of caution, my friends. These are algorithms. And guess what? Different companies have different ones. You know that business thing where people get paid for their work through licensing, etc., right? Yep. In this case, Dolby has their own binaural algo, which you can hear on the Dolby Atmos renderer while you are monitoring, and on Amazon Music HD and Tidal when the songs drop. And Apple has their own, which you probably know or have heard of as Spatial Audio, which you can hear on Logic Pro and through third-party plugins, or on Apple Music when the songs are out. Logic Pro, by the way, has the ability to monitor both algos, which is great. Anyways, these do sound different, and that should be taken into consideration when mixing. Hmm, perhaps a deeper dive into these two could be the uh, topic of a future video? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you want to start experimenting more in Atmos, before you get to the binaural modes, you need tools. Here are some of my favorites.